All right, everybody, this is DJ Rem from Smash Radio, and I have Mitch Laddie from the Mitch Laddie Band. How you doing, man? I'm good, man. Thanks for having me. Yeah, thank you for taking time out of your day. I appreciate it. Why don't we uh, start, if you could introduce yourself and the other members of your band that are not with us today. Yeah, it's just, just myself today. Um, well, I'm, I'm Mitch Laddie. Uh, I play guitar and vocals for the Mitch Laddie Band, and uh, the band is comprised of myself and... Um, Matt Connor on the drums and Ryan Wilkinson on the bass. Okay, a killer three piece. I like it. Yeah. So, how long has the Mitch Laddie band been around? Um, officially the the band it's been um the band under the name that we go under now has been around since I was about sixteen years old. Uh, and I've just turned twenty three, so from from about sixteen, I would say. But uh, this this uh, this lineup that we got now is about uh, about two years old. Okay, very cool. And how did um, how did you guys get together, and how did this this whole thing get get rolling for you? Um, well, me and Ryan, uh, the bass player, we met at uh, in our first year of uh, of secondary school. Uh, so we would have been about eleven years old, and uh, we just. It, you know, it made sense to, to start a band. We, we became friends. I played guitar uh, and he played bass. And then we got learning uh, together. And, and we just kind of progressed. And when we weren't at school, we were always playing our instruments, uh, if not alone or together. And then we met a, a, a drummer called, uh, who's a little bit older than us, uh, called Lee Clifford, uh, who was the guy who, who played drums on both this time around and on Burning Bridges. And then, um, basically, we we found another guitar player that was uh, that, that was at school, and we put a band together called Vanilla Moon uh, when we when we were kids. And then, when I was around fifteen years old, um, I I was I had the pleasure of meeting Walter Trout, uh, who is kind of a not a family friend, but a, a family acquaintance from going uh, from my family going to all of Walter's gigs around the country for for, uh, for since the early nineties, really. And then I had the pleasure of meeting him, and after being blown away by his performance, he asked me to, to send him some stuff, and we just hit it off, uh, just just got on really well from the get-go, and he asked me to send uh, send him some stuff of me playing guitar. So I raced home uh, from the gig and put this little, this really poorly recorded thing uh, onto a CD, and luckily my, uh, another family member was going to, a, going to another show on that tour, about a week later, so I gave the the CD to the family member, and they gave it to Walter, and then she, uh, Walter, gave me a call, and well, gave my give my dad a call, and uh, and said he wanted me to come and sit in with him in the band, and uh, I first did that when I was around 17, uh, 16, my bad, 16, and uh, we went around the country doing that for for about a year, uh, he, like off and on, you know, here here and there. Just catching them when they were on tour, and then Walter asked me to go over to the Paradiso in Amsterdam uh, to get signed up to Provoke, and uh, so I sat sat in with the band, and I got offered a record deal afterwards, and that that was that was where the first album came from, and and kind of the rest is history, I guess. Well, that's pretty darn cool. <laughs> uh, it's pretty it's pretty surreal looking back, but yeah, that's that's how it all came came into play. Well, very cool. Thanks for sharing that. I appreciate that. No worries, man. So, how often do, do you guys in the band uh, get together and practice, like on a weekly kind of basis? Um, we tried it. We tried to do once a week, and um, we, we don't. We we try not to over practice. I mean, if a lot of the times when we're playing live, if, if we're just playing live shows like on a weekly basis, sometimes we don't even we don't even rehearse we, we, uh, unless we're trying out a bunch of new songs then we, we tend to try and keep it as fresh as possible uh, just so we can bounce off how every, each of us can bounce off depending on how we're feeling on the night you know and uh, it, we don't we don't like to over rehearse and, and some people you know you know like some people think would, would say do you not feel underprepared or anything like, like that like that it's it's more a case of for us we, it, we feel totally comfortable in that with that uh, but I mean we're, we've started writing um for, for the next studio album and we try to get together about once a week um, but we spend a lot of time together because 
uh, my drummer owns a music store and my bass player works in the music store too so we, we tend to hang out a lot listening to music and coming up with ideas so it depends what you strictly call practicing I guess but we're together a lot and, and we, 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 we talk about music and talk about our ideas a lot and, and mess around and then but for a proper practice I'd say probably once a week all right. Well, that's cool. I mean, obviously, all that other stuff helps keep you guys a, t a, a tight knit group, which is extremely important with a band, you know. Yeah, definitely. So, what got you into music back, back when you first got into music? What kind of influences did you have that made you want to do something like this? Um. Well, it kind of goes back uh, to to being about two or three years old, and I was uh, I was massively influenced by the music that my grandfather was listening to. Um, and that was that was a lot of like country and western, and I, I really loved it as a kid. Really, really loved it. And even then, I had you know I had like a toy guitar and uh, used to listen to people like Alan Jackson and, and make like a a mustache out of uh, out of like play doh or something like that, you know, and, and stand and stand with a guitar and, and mime, you know, and try to mimic guys like Alan Jackson as early as three years old. But then uh, I. Then I, I kind of moved away from from the country stuff, and I, I found uh, I found guys like uh, like Michael Jackson, and then that led me on to uh, like Motown and, and a lot of great stuff like that and soul stuff. Um, but it wasn't really until I discovered like the works of Jimi Hendrix and Stevie Ray Vaughan and, and that kind of thing, and then all the blue, old blues guys like Albert King, um, that I was really like, okay, this is what I want to do, and and guys like Walter Trout as well. And yeah, so I, kind of, kind of a, an amalgamation of a, of, a, of a lot of different types of music. Well, that's cool. And I tell you, because when I listen to your album, Burning Bridges, I, I really get a, uh, a a feel for a lot of different styles kind of mixed together. And that's what and I find it really unique. And that's kind of what I was drawn to it when I heard it. Oh, thanks, man. I appreciate it. So I have to ask you about this current album, Burning Bridges. When, uh, what recording studio did you guys use? And we used a great little place, and it's it's in in the middle of like a like a country estate, um, near Buckingham in a, in 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 the UK, and it's it's a place called Liskam Park, and the studio is called Liskam Park Studios. But it, it's great because it's just out in the middle of the countryside, away from everything, and you just get to go and stay there and do the album, and then come and like kind of come and go as you please to to listen to stuff. And uh, we we did we did the album under. We we did the album in eight days, so it was it was it was nice, you know. We were there for about eight days, but because we were staying there too, it was it felt very concentrated and but relaxed at the same time. So it was good. It's a great little studio, though. Very cool. And how long did it take you from like the beginning of the writing process to getting in the eight days it took you to record? How long did the whole process take, including you know the actual writing? Um, I think the writing probably started as early as. A, a, probably about a year beforehand, uh, some some of the songs, songs like "What Are You Living For," um, which was about uh, somebody I, I used to know, kind of kind of kind of thing. I won't, I won't go into it, but uh, <laughs> that, that 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 came that came from a from a, a, a relationship with somebody that 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 was around about a year a year before the album was recorded. So probably about a year before all the songs came together, and then by the time we actually got into the studio and, and, and pre-production and stuff like that so yeah i mean it was probably about a year okay very cool so where is a good place for people to go to find out more about the mitch laddie band what uh social networking and websites do you guys use well we've got the uh we've got the the mitch laddie just just www.mitchladdy.com and then we've got a uh, we've got the likes of Facebook and Twitter and Reverb Nation, that kind of thing. All the usual kind of stuff, I guess. Okay, very good. Well, when everyone, when you listen to this interview, I suggest you go uh, there and check out, because I know on the Facebook page you can listen to some music, I believe, correct? Yeah, I, th I think I think that's, that's correct, yeah. So, check them out, and if you like them, you know what? Buy some tracks. Do you guys, do you have uh, merchandise for sale, too, somewhere? Yeah, we, we've got a lot on the website. We've got the CDs and T-shirts and stuff like that. Okay, very good. So, what are the goals for you guys? I mean, where do you guys hope to be in a couple of years with everything you're doing right now? 
Um, that's a good question. Um, to be honest, we, we because I got into, I mean, I've, I've, I've had to answer this kind of question in a, in a, in a different kind of. It's been asked differently, but I kind of keep giving a kind of a, an all like a slightly changed ver- variation on 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 the answer. But uh, basically, because I got into being like almost pigeonholed as being a blues artist from from as early as like 16 like 15 16 years old obviously there's a huge blues catalogue of influences there but uh there's so many other influences too and and it's not you know i don't want to be at 23 to be written off as just a blues artist and i just want to write we just want to write music as a band uh we want to bring all of our influences in and we, we ultimately we want to make it a blend between being fun and you know, being hard hitting when it needs to be, and be, be, being fun and being sincere when it needs to be. Um, but it, I mean, we've got a we've got a live album on the way, uh, which we just recorded a couple of weeks ago, and we hope to get uh, out kind of on an exclusive basis for for the upcoming tour, and then it'll be officially released next year. And with that, we just want to kind of. A lot of people asked us to, to to put that out for a couple of, uh, for a couple of years. People have been asking us to put this this live album out, um, and I think it's good because it, it gives people a reflection of, you know, you, you how how the songs from both this time around and Burning Bridges have progressed and grown up a little bit, and uh, and how they come across live as well as some of the new stuff that we're doing live and some of the covers we like to do and just the general energy and atmosphere of of a live show. But in terms of where we want to be in a few years. We just want to be touring, writing music, as I say, that is a that is some you know a, a good amalgamation of fun and you know fun yet sincere. Yeah, very good. Uh, what what do you guys have uh, lined up for shows like in the near future? And then you mentioned some tour stuff next year. So can you elaborate a little bit more on that? Yeah, I mean, uh, well, the the tour that we're going to be on uh, it kicks off in November this year, and. Uh, that's it's just UK. I mean, as it stands, we we don't have any we don't have any solid concrete plans to get over to the states. Um, but once once it's once those plans are there and and those you know it's right and it's under all the right uh, circumstances and stuff, we 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 can't wait to come over. But we'll we'll be touring the UK uh, in in November, starting on the sixth of November through to the end of November, and then uh, we we'll be on tour again. UK and Europe, I would say next year, and who knows? So we may even get to the states next year, but but we just don't know yet. All right, and I I totally uh, wish you guys the best of luck on your tours, and I can totally understand you know when you have to go that far, like to come over here. Definitely, things need to be um, set up properly. Yeah, definitely. A lot of bands get sucked. I don't know if "sucked in" is the right word, but get in with these promoters that really are just out for you know, to make money off them and not really help the band and it ends up just going really bad. That's it, yeah. I think I think most I think most bands have got at least one story about that kind of character. But uh yeah, you know, I mean it's as as you say, I mean we 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 can't wait to get over and it's definitely something that is in our plans, uh, because it would be stupid for it not to be in our plans, you know, it, it, of course it's in our plans. But we just we just want to make sure that it's done right and with the right people and nothing that, that, that is, you know, six months to a year down the line going to feel like a like a big mistake and might sour any kind of future plans that we can make to come back to the States, you know. But Yeah, definitely get that. It's funny, too, because whenever I talk to bands from Europe, is everybody wants to come to the United States, and whenever I talk to bands from the United States, everybody wants to go to Europe. It's kind of funny. Yeah, it's Europe's Europe's cool. I like Europe, but I haven't I haven't had a chance to see the states yet. But I can't wait. I can't wait. Okay, well, best of luck, man. Definitely. Thank you very much. Okay, so here's a question for you: If I if I grabbed your iPod or your MP3 player, however you listen to music, what uh, what kind of bands would I find you listening to right now? Um. Right now, I've kind of I've gone back to a lot of uh, a lot of stuff like Albert King. Um, I I really got into Gary Clark Jr. when his album came out, and John Mayer. I'm a big John Mayer fan, uh, but then I'm a, into a lot of 
a lot of old funk bands and you know Parliament, Funkadelic, Good Brothers Johnson. Um, but you know, uh, uh, Donny Hathaway as well. Donny Hathaway is a big one at the minute. But just 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 a, a lot a lot of soul guys, a lot of Marvin Gaye, a lot of Donny Hathaway, uh, and a lot of hip hop as well. A lot of kind of fun hip hop, you know, like uh, so, some old, some new, but. Kind of, kind of. I, 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 I don't know. I mean, off the top of my head, it's because I try to listen because we, as a band, and we, we've we've can't we spend the, the amount of time that we do together, and we're always bouncing ideas and bouncing. Oh, have you heard this? You know, have you heard this? And I kind of, I kind of end up listening to a, a whirlwind of different things. So, but those, those off the top of my head are the, the ones that come come to mind. No, oh, that's very cool, man. And I and I love the fact that you have that that wide range of uh, musical tastes. I think with. Uh, with bands and artists, it definitely makes for better music when you don't lock yourself into one little tiny box of music, if you know what I mean. Yeah, definitely. I mean, it's, it's as, as, as I say, I mean, I, th- I think I'd be kind of sell- selling myself short and, and I don't, I wouldn't see much point to it, you know, if I, if I was at 23, being happy, being set in my ways, you know, I, I think that would be, that would make for a sad state of affairs. That's right. We can't have a sad state of affairs. Exactly. So, what uh, what sets the Mitch Laddie band apart from all the other bands out there trying to do similar things? What are people going to get from you guys when they come to a live show? Um, I think it, it comes back to what I said earlier. I mean, it, it's that blend between writing sincere music, but making sure that people have fun, and and, and making sure that people know that we're having fun as well. And you know, I I think that that's, in terms of of, of a musical sense, I, I think it is, the fact that we we do have that many influences as a band, and I think those influences definitely come through. And we like we like to push ourselves, we like to experiment and uh, try out different different things, and and we don't want to be pigeonholed, as I said, in the, in that blues category. And we're gonna. Not that not that we want to bully our our way into other genres and other circles and that kind of thing, but you know, hope, hopefully, we can be the band that that crosses over a fair few genres, or and, you know, and and just as I say, sincere but fun. Okay, very good. And before I forget, I want to give a big, huge shout and thank you to Colin Etches because. I got talking with him on Facebook, and that's how this whole interview came to be in the beginning. So, big, huge thank you to him. Uh, Thanks, Colm. So, what's the craziest thing that's ever happened to you at a live show? And when I say crazy, it doesn't have to be bad. It could be something really cool, too. Okay, I've got got a good one. Uh, We did a a show with some friends of ours, um, another great band from over here called Virgil and the Accelerators. Um... Some friends of ours, but we uh, we 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 played and, and Virgil and the guys were on and uh, we were at the merch stand and this place we were playing was like an old church and we looked round and there was a guy. I, I looked round from the the merch table and I, I saw that there was a guy, just completely and utterly naked. And I had to do a double take to do, to just just to check if if I if I was actually seeing a guy sat there with absolutely no clothes on, and then. <laughs> I, I, so I asked the 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 band, I asked uh, both both Matt and Ryan who was stand, stood next to me, and they turned around and they were like, "No, that guy's definitely naked." Um, and then this guy looked at me, and kind of wiped his brow almost to say, "Thank God you've seen me. Now I can put my clothes on and get up and leave." <laughs> so that 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 was that was strange. That that was quite 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 a strange one. That's that was definitely a bit odd. Maybe he was um, do maybe he was in a bed or something. <laughs> Yeah, uh, you see, maybe, but he, he seemed, he, he seemed like uh, he had some stuff going on. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, obviously, right? I think so. Okay, so uh, now is the most important question of this interview that I'll ever ask. Okay. So I hope you're ready. Okay, I'm ready. Who um who spends the most time in front of a mirror before before a live show? <laughs> <laughs> um, I don't know. I don't know actually. I mean, it's uh, I, I think it's probably a blend of all of us, but but it's probably all of us uh, just being really stupid and taking stupid photos. We 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 have this ritual on tour 
that we take a like a pre uh, like like just before we go on stage we take a photo of ourselves in the mirror and they're always just ridiculous and, and stupid so I mean I don't think I don't think anybody spends a ridiculous amount of time in the, in the mirror um but I mean if if you asked if you asked Matt and Ryan they would probably say me but so if that's the case then I'll hold up my hands <laughs> okay very good <laughs> And see, usually this question goes so many different ways when I ask, but, the, you know, you guys have a ritual you do, so I wouldn't have known that, so very cool. Yeah, that's it. We, we like the, just just for memories and stuff like that, so when you get back off the tour and, like, six months down the line, you look at the photos and you, you try and figure out where where that where that photo was taken at which it would show and that kind of thing. And then, because we might be doing something stupid, it might it might be something that that is, uh, like, a like a nod to something that's happened during during that day and then it just makes for reminiscing I guess. Oh yeah, and you gotta have fun, you know? If you're not having fun, there's no point. Definitely. Okay, is there anything else you would like to tell everyone that'll hear this interview? Anything I haven't asked you you want to make sure people know about the Mitch Laddie band? Just, n not, not really, I mean just, just, to, just to go and check us out and, and see what you think and as I said, we, we we with what we're doing, you know, it, it is sincere. But when when you see us and you know you see videos of us or anything like that, and and we're, we're laughing on stage, you know, we're not we're not we're not we're not messing around. We're, we're just having fun, and and that's that's what we want to do. We wanna we want to tour. We want to make music. We want to move people. As, as I say, it's it's all about sincerity because otherwise, what's the point? And that's that's what being a musician is all about. That's why I do it. Um. But at the same time, it's all about having fun and not taking yourself too seriously. Okay, very good. I just I want to thank you once again for taking the, the time to, to call in and do the interview. And just so in case you're not aware, I do have a couple tracks from the current album in the at the uh, radio station in the 24-7 stream, so it's constantly rolling. Right up. Thanks, man. That's great. And so the last thing I'd like to do is I'd love to get a radio liner from you, if you don't mind. Yeah, okay. So you can just you know you can just say this is Mitch from the Mitch Laddie band and you're listening to Smash Radio. Okay, here we go. All right. Hey, this is Mitch Laddie from the Mitch Laddie band and you're listening to Smash Radio. Okay, perfect, man. That's uh, that'll do it for that. And once again, thank you for your time. And please tell, please tell the other guys in the band I said hello. I will do. I will do. Thanks for having me, man. Yeah, no problem. Definitely, my pleasure. And any, and if anything, uh, in the future, when something new is coming up around, if you want to talk about it and try to help spread the word, uh, let me know. I'd be more than happy to do this again. So. Well, th me too, man. Thank you. Thank you again. Yep. Okay. You take care. You too. Yep. Bye. Bye.